Tamara and today is our fifth day in our Learn to Sew series and it is our final class. That doesn't mean that I will not be adding to this playlist. So if you are new to sewing, please check out that playlist. Now this particular video is all about sewing patterns. There are two general types of sewing patterns you can buy. You can buy an envelope style sewing pattern, which will look something like this. And you can buy a PDF sewing pattern, which will look something like this. Something that you should know about the PDF sewing patterns is they will come with a piece of paper because you will be printing out your pattern, right? So you'll be printing it on a ton of paper and then you'll have to tape all of those pieces together. But first, before printing out your pattern, have a look for the page that has a test square on it. All PDF patterns should come with a test square. This test square is four inches by four inches square. So I will print this piece of paper and then I will take my ruler and measure this square to make sure it's correct. If it's not, then I need to adjust my printer settings to make sure that this paper gets printed correctly before I print my entire PDF pattern. Once you've done that, then you can start printing out your actual pattern pieces and they will look something like this. This pattern actually has little triangles with little numbers in them. So this one says 2A, this one says 1A. And you're actually going to line up these triangles with the matching numbers on your pattern. So this one is 2B, this is 2A. So you will want to line up 1A with 1A, but you can't line it up like this. You'll have to cut one of those edges off. The way that I like to do this is I just use my little Fiskars cutter here, which I bought for scrapbooking years ago, and I find it very helpful. And you're gonna start matching all of those little squares and taping them all together. A pattern in an envelope will actually come with your instructions, and then it will come with a whole pack of brown tissue paper. And this brown tissue paper will have patterns printed on them. And what you'll have to do, of course, is cut out your pattern pieces. Something to note with the PDF versions is they're a bit harder to store. So what I have done with my PDF versions once I've cut them out, I will actually hang them on one of these pants hangers here. And I find that it's a great trick. Just hang it in, you know, your spare bedroom closet or something. And then they can all lay nice and flat. These tissue paper pieces are easy to fold and put back into those envelopes. Now that you know a little bit about the differences between the two, we're gonna move forward just talking in generalizations because after this, both of the patterns should work in the same way and move towards the same goal, which is your final sewing project. In the instructions, they will come with a bit of a key like this. It will show you all of your pattern pieces that you'll need for your project and how to lay them onto your fabric before cutting out your fabric. Your fabric pieces will sometimes need mirrored images. So just because it says you need two pieces does not mean you need two pieces cut laid flat on that right side of the fabric. You may need a right side and a wrong side so you have mirrored images. They will often have a key guide and your key guide will explain to you um, the shaded side may be the wrong side of the fabric. The clear image will be the right side of the fabric. Double check that though because you can't guarantee that every single company uses the same key guide. So always review that key guide on on your sewing pattern. Say like this one here, wrong side of a pattern, this one here, cut one layer only. So there are different things that you need to know within cutting your sewing pattern. Some of these things are shown on the pattern itself. So almost like a double check. So you'll have a look at your pattern and it may say, like on this one here, it says cut two. Another thing you will often see on patterns is a line with an arrow on either end. And that line is asking you to place it on the straight grain of your fabric. The reason why you really need to pay attention to how your fabric lays before you cut your pattern pieces, and the reason why you really need to follow how they lay out the pattern pieces on the fabric is because if you cut it not following the grain with the arrow that they've shown you, 
your pattern, uh, the item that you're sewing, may drape differently. If you have the bias of your fabric, so the bias of fabric would be going this way along this arrow. If you were to lay that arrow or this piece on your fabric this way, laying along the bias of your fabric, your fabric will have a lot more stretch to it. But if you're laying it on the grain of the fabric, it will be sturdier. So trust your pattern when it tells you where you should be placing it on the fabric. I know it's in our nature to save every little piece of fabric and you kind of go, well, but I can puzzle piece this particular pattern piece in here and I can save myself some fabric. But in the end, that may ruin your sewing project. So follow those guides that the patterns actually give you. Now, this here is a piece of paper that came with the envelope style pattern piece. And it shows you here how to lay out your pattern pieces and how to cut them appropriately. Some patterns will come with no seam allowance shown on the pattern. Double check that. There are companies that don't show that and expect you to take that into consideration when cutting your fabric. So double check that the pattern that you bought has the seam allowances included or not. That way you're not cutting your fabric incorrectly. And on the back of your envelope, it will actually show you the amount of fabric that you need to cut and how many different pieces of fabric you may need or if you need batting or interfacing and all of these things. Now, as you can see, this particular pattern is not for clothes. So you can get patterns for all sorts of things but it should have a list on the back of everything that you'll need to buy. On the back of this one here, because this one was for clothing, it has a lot more information as far as your sizing goes and how much fabric you'll need to buy. So they've done a lot of that math for you. So don't be too intimidated when it comes to that. And if this is even too overwhelming and you're looking at the back going, I can't do a sewing project, this is, this is just way too much, take this to somebody in the sewing store obviously that works there. I don't know, maybe somebody there wants to help you that doesn't work there, but take it to them because they know how to read these packages and they can definitely help you figure out how much fabric you need for your project. Next, I am going to go through some flashcards and the reason why I'm gonna go through some flashcards is just to give you an overview of a lot of the different symbols that you may come across on your sewing patterns. Every symbol means something different. I do have in my beginning Beginner's Guide to Sewing, which I will have linked in the description down below. I have a guide that you can follow and on that guide it has all of these symbols on it so you can refer back whenever you need. So definitely have a look at that and see if that interests you. But otherwise, we'll go through it right here. So this image is a fun little squiggly image and it means that it wants you to gather your fabric. So in some places you may need to gather your fabric if you're making a skirt or you need a ruffle on your fabric, so that's what that would be for. This image, of course, will differ in size, but it will show you where your pocket placement can be. And the little circles on the ends is what you can do with thread. You can do a little marking with thread through your pattern itself, and then also through the fabric, so that you're leaving a trail with the thread. Once you take the pattern off, you'll still have a spot where your thread sits on all four corners that you'll be able to follow to put that pocket there or whatever else you're trying to put there. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you can see, but on this pattern piece here, you can see there are some leftover threads from doing that on this particular pattern here. So it wasn't obviously for pocket sleeves, but it was for these lines that needed to match up to other fabric pieces. So that's just a little trick that you can do when you see those little dots on your patterns. This one here is an image for pleats. So if you're doing pleats, then you can follow the dots and it'll show you where things need to fold. Similar, this is for tucks. 
So it would be the same thing. You're just tucking your fabric together. I'm going to try and go through these quickly. So if you do want more of an in-depth description on all of these images, definitely check out your pattern because your pattern should have an in-depth description on what its images are. This one here is bust point and the drill hole. These are used to help guide a dart to the correct location. This is for your buttonhole and your button placement, obviously. So this is where you'll put your button. This is where a buttonhole will need to be placed. This is an image for the actual dart itself. This is very simple. So what you'll see on patterns often is a bunch of lines and these extra lines are more for where do you want, say, your skirt to end up? Do you want a longer skirt, a shorter skirt? So there's different cutting areas and often what they'll do is they won't, it won't be at the bottom of your skirt, but it'll say be in the middle of the pattern of your skirt. So you'll be able to extend it or be able to shorten it in the center. This one we already spoke about. This is for your grain line. Very important. Pay attention to that. And we also spoke about this. So this is actually your cut on the bias of the grain line. So sometimes patterns actually do want that extra give or extra stretch that a fabric can give you and they will have planned accordingly for that with your pattern and placement as you're laying it on your fabric. This is a fold line. This means that your pattern piece has only been cut for half of it and it wants you to lay that pattern piece along the fold of your fabric. By doing so, you can cut the mirrored image without slicing it in half and having an extra seam that you need to sew down the center. These are both for the same thing. So it really depends on your company, what they use, but these are back notches. And then you have front notches. And of course, these notches are to help you line up your pattern pieces. And finally, these are your cutting lines. You'll see a whole bunch of them. Sometimes they'll be in different colors. Sometimes they will show you different designs. And that will essentially show you different sizes of the project. So if you want to cut out a size large or you need to cut out the medium, whatever you need to cut out, you'll follow the correct line. And that, my friends, is a very brief overview of patterns and how they function, how you can read them. So I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And as always, subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss future beginner sewing tutorials. I love making simple and easy projects that you can easily follow along with most of them without a pattern. But if you are interested in jumping into that pattern world, I hope that this tutorial helped you out. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.